Hello, this is Dr. Tony. I'm here with Monique Johnson, and she is a expert massage therapist in the sense where she's done the whole route of going part-time, full-time mom, manager of a massage center, and now she runs her own business, her own oasis on her property, and still takes care of three plus kids, as far as I know. I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff going on in her life, okay? So she's running the full show. She's done it for how long now? 18 years. 18 years. Wow. That's enough time. I've been in practice for almost 20 years. That's enough time to call yourself an expert because you've, you've got through the good times, bad times, and learned your art, learned your craft, so you are an expert in my mind. All right? Thank so, Mitty, walk me through your process, how you got here from part-time, full-time, manager, everything. Give me an update. Oh, it's a very long story. So, uh -huh. I went to school when I was 19, uh, graduated at the top of my class, I ended up opening up my own center in the back of a Pilates studio for about six years. Okay. We moved off the mountain, went to Garden Grove. I got a lead therapist position down at Disneyland at their spa. Wow, Worked okay. Worked there for two years. Awesome. When we moved back to Lake Arrowhead, I reopened my business in my home, though, because mm -hmm. I was still trying to have another child. Mm-hmm. This one? Uh, yep. Good. Congratulations. Yep. You made it. Thank you. She did. <laughs> <laughs> so there, we were there for about six years, and then we packed it up and tried to move out of state for a year and a half. So I did take a break. I kind of went okay. back to some old roots of working for a school district and um, wasn't mm -hmm. for us, so we came back. Okay. Came back to Ranch Cucamonga. Here I'm new. We started off. I started off at Massage Enfield for, for a little bit just to kind of get to know the community. Okay. Then jump ship uh, and went to another spa where I could actually be ma acting manager and do more of what. At that time, being about 15, 16 years into it, Got it. not okay. just being a worker. So it's almost you're doing the business side for a business versus doing, are you still doing massage back then too? I was, yeah. yes. Yeah, so it about. was kind okay. of a, I had yeah, the hat of many, many uh, yeah, positions at that place. Okay, so yeah. you were, you are back and forth back. This is back in 1920? Uh, 2019, yeah. Okay. Southern California yeah. is a branch of the if you're not watching it from local SoCal area. Uh, and, and part of it from 20, so when, when did you shut down, shut down? The yeah, stuff? March of 2020. The time, boom, it hit us all, right? Yep. In the world, crazy. Yep. And when you shut down, how long did it take you to go, okay, now it's shut down, uh-oh, what do I do next? I literally, within two weeks, mm -hmm. had my table shipped to my house, a new right. one, boom. and uh, my products, and just started doing house calls and started making phone calls and reaching out to friends to see who was comfortable with me doing a house call, taking all the safety precautions possible, Good. Um, letting everybody know what I clean my products with and my equipment with, that way they felt safer, and um, thank God for friends. They really kept me afloat. Well, they kept you, kept you going because they could trust you. Yes. You built that trust. How many people you know that you worked with pr before March of 2020 when things hit um, that quit the doing massage therapy? Oh, multiples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on my mm -hmm. massage groups, there was just one after another, I'm switching careers, I'm, I'm throwing in the towel, I can't find work, nobody's hiring, mm -hmm. I can't do it, I'm switching careers, and it was uh, probably a good dozen and that I know of. What do you think, what made them want to quit versus making people want to stay being a therapist, even though it was going to be ten times harder? Uh, you know, it's it's the work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's putting in that, that mm -hmm. hard work. Uh, I like to be an entrepreneur, I love working for myself, I love making my own schedule. It's actually really difficult for me to work for someone else because of going from working for myself to then going you know, back and forth. Back yeah, and back forth. and forth. Well, you've seen both sides. Yes. You know how it works. Yes. And then, what has is there one characteristic you could say that made you want to now go from being part time, mobile, whatever I can, to now I want to build my way. So I want to make this a permanent business decision on my property versus just mobile. Um, Honestly, I would say, you know, just wanting to be successful and um, having that financial freedom and mm -hmm. our baby kind of threw a little wrench in there. <laughs> we were not planning on having <laughs> another one. Yes. So that kind of pushed us back a little bit and because uh, we were looking at commercial spaces and gotcha, it was gotcha. like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this full throttle. Let's do this right. I want to have employees. I want to be able to retire, but I also want to mold a company to be as much like me as possible to actually help people to find passionate therapists, which is actually very difficult to find. It's hard to find someone that when you're, I want, I want to use the word perfectionist in a personal sense as I think I, I've been told I have been, 
is there's a certain standard we set for ourselves. Yes. That standard, I call it Tonyism, you can call it Moniqueism, whatever you want to call it, that standard is set high enough to where someone doesn't meet that standard, you go, okay, I can't work with someone like that. Yes. And there might be some leeway in there, but with someone's personality is someone's personality, you have to be able to depend on them to be your brand, your name. I can, I can go with my partner here, for example, we've been, we've been I call it married for the last 20, almost 20 years now, and uh, it's Terrible. been very good. We are on the same standard of what we expect from our staff, from ourselves, and from our office to brand us with a good reputation, nice. accept as much as possible. But can we, can, it's hard to find that, so when you have that standard, it's go, okay, how do I make this my thing and then promote that within so I can have a positive ROI, run a successful, growing business, but not overdo it either, correct? Yes. Good, good, good. Yeah, when you, and your husband, you mentioned in construction, he was able to build an oasis. So I'm going to put some pictures after the show as a comment so you can see the oasis being, or being, being done built. Um, how does that work for you going from mobile to having your own center on site? I would say it's actually really nice. <laughs> it's really nice. Well, because, you know, me being only five feet tall, my table's 48 pounds, mm -hmm. it throws me off. It's a beast. Quite a bit, yes. So I still do house calls. Um, I just try to pick certain days that are a little slower. Mm -hmm. Just I try to schedule that, but being at my house, is it's so much nicer. People show up, yes. you do it, and you're done. Yes. I, we have a table here, it's about 50 pounds. No. And it, it's bulky. It's like, it's like this big. Yes. See? It's a beast. It's not even like here. It's not a kettlebell. It's it's here. Yes. So, and having to that, and the same thing. I feel like they mentioned that it. I love doing it, but the mobility, the, the stress on the body too. Yeah. No, that's how do you keep yourself physically fit to do what you do? I do a lot of workouts at home. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. hardly ever sit down. I try to stretch as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Coming from, gosh, twenty three plus years in ballet. Um, I don't stretch half as much as I should. Well, again, the standard is so high, right? <laughs> but is it enough to get you through your day? Yes. And then so I know too to. that it's like if my thumbs start bothering me, I know I'm using my thumbs too much. I got to back off. I got to ice. I got to stretch them and heat them at the same time. It's a self care that we sometimes, the same thing as chiropractors, I go to seminar sometimes. It's a chiropractor over there icing down, one with a brace on, with a back brace on. I'm like, take care of yourselves, people. But it, it's that self-care sometimes we forget about because we're taking care of the people all the time. With your, with your idea of how things work, how has it been running the business side um, as your own business versus someone else's business? Uh, honestly, for my own business, because I know the ins and the outs. Mm -hmm. I know where all my paperwork is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have everything in line and organized in, in that sense. It's a lot less stressful. When you go in to somebody else's business that uh, Inevitably, it's it kind system. of yes. That's it. You find the flaws, and yeah. you know it's it's kind of like diving in the deep end and trying to swim your way through it and organize things and, and fix things. And it's hard to help people when you're so worried about the business end of it versus helping people first. Business side becomes easier, I think. Yes. I, maybe it's just me. Okay. It gave me a lot of lessons that I did need to learn too on my for my own business of just uh -huh. having to do my own research of like, okay, I don't, I don't think that's legal, and then happen to look into it. And How much have you out. eventually relied on people to help you grow your business? How much you relied on people to help you grow grow the business side of, of seeing people as a massage therapist um, clients to now the business side of running a business? How much have you reached out to people or used, for example? Um, it's been, um, I've held back because of the baby uh -huh. quite a bit. Uh -huh. And just being worried that I would put too much on my plate and mm -hmm. not be able to juggle the baby in okay. my business as well. So um, I use social media, a lot of word of mouth, um, a lot of uh, text messaging, throwing out deals, summer deals, uh, holiday deals. And um, like right now I have a summer special going on because I'm a little slow. It did, it's still good, yeah. Yep, a lot of people are on uh -huh. vacation. So I threw out a summer deal of two one-hour massages for 100 bucks, which good. is a steal easy. of a deal. Easy. Very easy. Well, it allows you to still be busy and still grow a clientele and still use them to, as, as anything, as everyone knows, your best referral comes from people you already see. They're the best referral source. When you grow that referral base, boom, that's how you grow a business. Okay? Switching ships to go, okay, now I, now I feel confident knowing that, or I feel comfortable knowing that Monique is confident at running a business and being there for you, and, and she'll be there when she schedules you, she'll be your therapist. 
what you offer inside your, your spa, your oasis, that allows people to get healthy? I, I offer a lot. But Good, <laughs> um, but I want to hear about this. This is my yeah, biggest. So I really specialize in proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. PNF? It's a mouthful, a, a full mouthful, mm -hmm. so PNF. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, breaking up scar tissue, using hot and cold stone therapy, increasing range of motion. I mean, really getting in there, doing muscle releases, however, and whatever techniques you end up needing to use to help people heal from post-surgeries or injuries. Good. And I also deep tissue, that's a definitely a number one ask yes. for. Getting in there with the elbows, tripping out the muscles, getting all that lactic acid out of there. A lot of sports, a lot of post-sports, so a lot of stretching, muscle releases, deep trigger point work, mm -hmm. getting in there. Sometimes with hot stones, if I feel like it's necessary, or if I see an area that's swollen, I'll throw in some cold stones. And then I do a lot of lymphatic as well, which Good. wasn't as popular in the mountains. Um, in the mountains, what? a lot of my clientele was over the age of 60. So it, it was it. mostly deep tissue and stretching. Got it. So your demographics did change when you moved down here? Quite a bit. So uh, now it's uh, age 30 to mm, about 75. So it's a big difference. A lot range. Of, yes, a lot of hairstylists, a lot of uh, desk jobs. Um, so a lot of upper back and shoulders and... Um, when I say like the hunched posture per se. Yeah, big time. And nice. then a lot of plastic surgery down here. And nice, yeah. It's huge, mm -hmm. huge for lymphatic. It helps you heal. It helps all of the the inflammation get out of there a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I found that a lot of doctors don't know of any certified therapists out there. I've tried getting my name out, tried calling some plastic surgeries in Fort um, surgery, surgery centers, and unfortunately, they all want to keep it in house. But in house, do you? I mean, that's the thing. I I have, I have patients that unfortunately have had breast cancer. They've done. The, they've had to have some lymph nodes removed, and that lymph node that they were doing has been affected. But they had to reach out themselves, versus their doctors saying, "Hey, go and do this." Most most surgeons that I've seen, yeah. they go, "Okay, we're done. Yeah. Good luck out there. You have to almost do your own research." So putting something on like that, where okay, I do lymph nodes that does helps this 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 benefit. People that talk about that is going to be huge. It's huge. Right. It's one of my number one clients that has been in my life for 18 years mm -hmm. now. She's family. I still travel to Lake Arrowhead to see her. Wow. She has a severe uh, lymphedema from breast cancer. Okay. And so okay. I still do lymphatic on her. Wow. Yeah. yeah. She knows the routine. Has she done a video for you yet? No. Good. Hint, hint. <laughs> that would do. I'm like, we'll have to see if she'll do it for me. <laughs> and, and right now, just being uh, July 2020, 22, sorry, um, and we're kind of getting out of, of most of the severe COVID we've been in. This are open. We're kind of getting back to normal business schedule cycles. What do you see now as the biggest stressor bringing people to massage? Uh, working, yeah. hustling. Yeah, mm -hmm. I happen to pick up the slack for you know either the company not having enough workers, mm -hmm. or just over being overworked, working at home at the computer all the time. They're coming in with headaches, a lot of upper mm -hmm. back uh, stress knots and stress and tension in, in their arms and a lot of sciatic pain. I'm, seeing a lot of clients that are coming in for a lot of hip pain, so a lot of um, TFL and a lot of IT band work. And a lot of the times, uh, yeah, I have clients that come in that for their sciatic. Good. So, and that is definitely one of my specialties on releasing sciatic. Good. A lot of times, too, they don't realize that, you know, the nervous system is like a freeway system through our body, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't realize that sometimes it's not the sciatic, sometimes it's the staffness, or it could be something else. And then breaking that down and going through it, you know, and I always start with the easiest, let's, re let's release your piriformis mm -hmm. to get it to let go of the sciatic if it's your sciatic. Do you educate your patients as you work with them of yes. what's going on? Why, why do you, I, I, I agree that's important, but why is that important? You know, I think it's really important so that they understand, so that mm -hmm. they can actually maybe visualize what's going on with their body so that they know how to help themselves at home if Huge. I can't be available last minute. Huge. You know, and I always let them know, call me, text me. If I'm not available, just text me. Let me know what's going on, and I will walk you through stretches that you need to do, what equipment you need to grab, mm -hmm. and what can help you. It's almost like you will become their primary care clinician, and when, when even if they are on a weekend or a Sunday morning, okay, I woke up, I can't move. What do I do? Yes. Phenomenal. What I, I like, you mentioned, you want to help by educating our patients, your clients allows us to then to give them the knowledge to become their best doctor on their own. The best therapist in the room. That's our biggest plan, right? We help them. They, again, everyone comes in my office today, shoulder pain, back pain, and hip pain today. Okay? So my thing is, 
will come in with pain, yes, that's a new patient, but have you educated them to become their best doctor so that pain happens again, they know what to do. Yes, Boom. exactly. And I always tell them, you have to be your own advocate. Always. Yes. And a lot of times they're afraid to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Or it's just, oh man, it takes me months to get in. Yeah. You gotta get in. You gotta get in. I don't have x ray vision. I can't see. There's yeah. something going on in there. And it's just. Well, but you know, but you know, certain point, okay, I may be able to help you with this, but what point do you go, and everyone has their, their gray area, okay, I'm, I'm gonna help you, but we have to do this, this, and this also outside of my, my care. Yeah. What point do you feel like that's your. Because my, mine is like, if someone's come to my office, my chiropractor, and I'm seeing for two weeks, they're not seeing progress, even within a week, okay, we're not seeing progress in a week, week and a half, but let's go get an MRI. Let's do this. Let's get the next step level of at least diagnosing it properly so we're not missing anything. Yes. And it usually for me, it's about two to three weeks. Good. And it's usually, okay, let's try something else the next time. Mm -hmm. And getting them to come in every week, too. Like, mm -hmm. You're not going to see a change yeah. if you don't come in every single week. And, that's, yeah. and I've seen that. It makes a huge difference compared to down here with the de different demographics. Sure. They can't come in all the time. Yeah. And I'm starting from ground zero every single time. And uh, that's when I try to explain them, you know, like, we're not getting to where we need to be, I'm not seeing what I possibly need to see because I'm not seeing you often enough. And then at that point, if they're not, if it's not getting better, they're still swollen, they're doing the right things at home, I've tried three different techniques, it's uh -huh. still not working, that's why I, I always need to go to the doctor, make a doctor's appointment. It's time, it's, it's time. time. Get an x-ray, get an MRI done. See that, that's going. almost like you have, again, the experience to tell someone, I've done, I've seen this before, boom, this is, a recall thing, let's make sure you get the right care. I don't care if you see me or not, let's make yeah. sure you get the right care for you. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing. I, I had someone come in about probably three months ago, and she saw a chiropractor for 15 months and never got better. Wow. I go, what the heck? Wow. I almost go, okay, I mean, how does someone leave someone on care that long and not see improvement? I don't get it. Right. So, and, and, and looking out for someone's being, again, advocate for someone's help, you're going to go, okay, I may help this person, but I'm not helping them right now. Let's get them where I can help them. Mm -hmm. I tell people if you're not a, if you're not a level uh, five pain out of ten, uh, a level five out of ten pain level by the time I end in two weeks, you gotta get some of the imaging done. Yeah. Let's see where else you can do. Uh, okay. How do you deal with people when they have pain that has now made them feel stressed and or anxious and or depressed? Ooh, that's usually yeah. Ha. This that's is a, a good bonus one. question that yes. I didn't ask you before. That's usually, you know, talking to them, getting them, getting things calmed down, you know, um, a lot of times too when their pain has reached that, mm -hmm. that point, I take it down a notch, I back off the deep tissue, mm -hmm. it's when I go in lighter, mm -hmm. a little more hot stone, and get their body to calm down. I'll dig in just a little bit, I'll see it react, I calm it down again. So it's working hard, playing nice hard and playing nice because okay. uh, my experience at school was that you know my, my teacher supervisor mm -hmm. often was pushing her to no teach them to get in there and start ripping it out uh, I instantly saw a pushback on yeah. everybody that did that too and in the end I, I got myself into a little bit of a pickle because I did get into an argument with her where I said you know if, if you're actually observing and paying attention their body's kicking back you can adjust it's as not, you go right yes, it's not responding well and yeah. I don't I don't believe the body is responding best that way. I think no. you need to go in there a little gentle, start it, warm it up, then dig it in, mm -hmm. see how it starts to respond. If it responds negatively, back off. Good. But if it doesn't, then you can kind of dig in a little bit. I have had several clients that will afterwards say, oh man, that was that was intense Ooh. and that was literally painful. And for me, I was like, wow, I heard zero fluctuation yeah. in your voice. Yeah. It felt like you could take it. It's like, you're doing fine. I saw the tears. You're good. But you're I good. always tell them, please tell me. Yes. If, if the pain reaches higher than an eight, I have to back off. Because some, too, have been led to believe that the harder it is and the more painful it is, it's good for you. And I said, no, it's not. Because like, that means I can release too much. And if you go past that four days of, of pain, it's too much. You can bruise. You can cause injuries. It's not okay. I have to stop. It's almost they just don't know yes. what, where it is. By, by communicating with them, allowing them to understand what's going on, you can now communicate with through verbal or through grunts or through guarding that, okay, now let's back it off a little bit. Yeah. You know that's okay to do. Yeah. With someone coming in that they're, they're pretty tight, they have a stressful job, how do you recommend coming back or setting up a frequency with them coming in? How does that usually work with you? 
cream, you know, I'm probably too nice because at that point I'm usually Sad. letting them know. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I recommend you coming back every week. Mm -hmm. It would be better for you, but I understand. You're a mom, you get busy and yeah. work. So give me a call when you have the time. Let's get mm -hmm. you in as soon as possible. And, and oftentimes, too, I let I do let people know that, you know, I'm maybe a little tight on budget. Yeah. You, and if I feel that they need to come in, yeah. and I have told certain individuals, you need this. Mm -hmm. So if the price isn't working for you, let me know. Work we something can out. Negotiate. Yeah. And that's the thing is you're, you're looking out for someone's health versus I just want to come in for a massage. Yeah. So it's looking at someone's overall well-being, going, okay, you have this stress in your life. You, the stress is not going to go away. How do we work around your schedule to make sure you get enough of the care you need so the self-care can become more effective that you do on your own? You said people's lives are crazy right now. Okay, okay it's commercial break. It's stressful. It's like, I can't turn it off. Yep. <laughs> no, no, no. We're almost there like five minutes. So a lot of it is going to be how do we get our bodies, and as you deal with people too, Whatever their stress level is, how to bring that stress level down enough so they can actually feel relaxed, feel their health coming back, and then maintain that, right? Yeah. It's huge. It's, yeah, it's totally huge. And it's just coaching them to understand that they have to create a new muscle memory. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, meditation at home. What, whatever brings you down, whether it's going for a walk, reading a book, sitting outside for a minute, meditating, going for a run. Um, Pilates. I recommend Pilates all the time because awesome. it's extremely strengthening but low impact on the body and joints. And so it's getting them to understand, okay, we've got to take your stress levels. Because I have been high anxiety. Yeah. I always have. And I've always had to just figure find, out how find to ways. simmer down. You know? yeah. Yes, and a lot of the times it's just soothing music, meditation, going for walks, you know, going outside and having that time mm -hmm. to myself. And I know as a mother it's extremely difficult. You have three. <laughs> you might get yes. one minute, but at least huh. <laughs> the one minute might help, you know. <laughs> but honestly, massaging my clients has been my huge, release. Huge. Yeah. It's your, it's your, like you had mentioned too, and it is, it's your passion. So that allows you to feel good about what you do as a, call it job, yeah. as a business. Why not? Yeah. You know, when you went, I, my wife asked me a few months ago, I keep saying this, is what's your favorite day of the week? I go, Monday. Yeah. Monday? Why Monday? See how my patients again. But it's fun. Exactly. Fun for me. They yeah. entertain me every day. Thank you. Exactly. You know? like, it's my Zen time. It's when, I, it's when I feel like I know what I'm doing. Yes. You know? Thank That's you. what it comes down to. We had uh, stuff going on uh, this office. We had one of our tables break. I'm like, we'll figure it out. It's life. Yeah. When you have a someone like yourself, like, to where you understand how to balance out, and again, a life, a family life, and then still run a business inside your property and home, phenomenal and be effective and look at people's well-being, not just their shoulder pain, their back pain, their neck pain, their tightness, their soreness, but their overall well-being as a person, that's the key, I think. As a takeaway, what do you want people to know for your first show on the Crooked Spine show today? You know, that's, uh, I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I am humble enough to know that if I don't know something, I will research it and I will figure out the answer for you. I will always listen, I will always be there for you, and I will do my absolute best to make you feel better and fix you. I think working with Monique as your massage therapist will be a relationship yes. that she becomes your, your I want to call it soft tissue clinician to help your body understand how to stay healthy in a stressful time and how to overall, once you feel good, how do we now get stronger? How do we handle the stress of our day physically, mentally, and emotionally? All right, and the show notes has all links to her website, her Instagram. You're not on TikTok yet, are you? I am not on TikTok yet. Don't go, it's crazy. When you're ready, percent. when you're ready. But her information is out there. She can put more videos out there too, hint, hint, more and more, and to show her progress and help build up her marketing. I just want to get to start with this video because I understand my friend recommended Danny Serrano, who'll probably watch the show down the line too. Thank you. Understand exactly <laughs> what he needs. I've known him forever, he gets massage off, and so I trust his opinion. and. Week. You're my new best friend. Thank friends. you so much, Anthony. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Awesome. Thank you.